Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at Option Now for the members only video update. Uh, it is 500 point Dow afternoon here right after the close, about 4.30 on Thursday. And uh, so I think this is an important video. I want everyone, honestly, uh, to take their time to go through it. Don't try to skip through. There's a lot of things I'm going to cover in this video. It's very important um, considering what we've gone through. So. Uh, I have a list here of things I want to go through with you guys, and so I'm just going to go pretty much straight down the list, hit every major point here, uh, and hopefully, I know questions are going to be coming through email. I've already started getting them, so I'm going to try to get this out ahead of time. Um, the first thing is, uh, did you crap your pants today? Uh, I know I sure was taken off guard by what happened today, and I can bet that everyone else did out there as well. The good thing is, is that we're still doing a lot better than nearly every other service that I know of. Uh, weekly trading services are going to get slammed this week. Um, the, the weekly options, if you traded weekly options this week, unless you were buying puts, um, you're going to get slammed on those. Anybody who had any iron condors uh, going to get slammed. Anybody who had spreads too close to the market are already getting slammed. Uh, anybody who sold options too close to the market are already getting slammed. Um, and I think that this, hopefully, uh, and hopefully I don't eat my words here, but I think that this just one incident here really drives home the point for me about why I'm so conservative in my trading. Now, during times when I could clearly make 5%, 6% by getting closer to the market, I look back at times like this, and I'm glad I'm doing a video like this, because this is exactly when you want to be far away from the market. You want to be as far away as you can possibly be from the market. And I think we did a really good job of that. I'm going to go through all of our positions. There's only one trade that I'm kind of sort of worried about and we might consider rolling tomorrow. Uh, but everything else is looking really good. Uh, I think that, and I'm happy that I've done a good job and, and prudently not entered trades this week uh, and deliberately. Um, I've said numerous times to people and on the blog and on videos and through emails that buying out of the money puts was the best thing you could do. I, I said it multiple times. And, uh, and again, both video, posts, emails, out of the money puts protect against this one in a million type of, of situation that we got going on here where the market just has these erratic, irrational, huge moves lower. And I got a lot of emails from people today telling me that they didn't buy out of the money puts. Now for full disclosure, you have to understand that with our strategies, we're only selling one option. So it doesn't really make sense for me to tell you guys all the time or or not tell you guys or to send out a trading alert to buy out of the money protection for those positions because in and of themselves one contract in the portfolio is not going to you know is not a lot right but if you have multiple contracts the, the reason I send out those updates and, and suggest buying out of the money protection is because if you have 40 50 60 short puts then you should be buying 10 20 you know and start to scaling into some protection so that you at least mitigate some of the downside risk um, so that's why I do that. And of course, like I said, I've, I've said it numerous times. So hopefully some of you did heed that advice. I know they've paid very good dividends from, from my portfolio. I started buying them a couple weeks ago when I suggested. Kept buying them last week. Uh, and they've, they've really helped mitigate some of the downside move. Uh, and might actually be really, really profitable uh, at the end of the month here. So the other thing I'm going to go over uh, real quick before we get into all the positions. I'm going to go over all the current positions that we have um, and, and just show you guys where they are. But uh, two things, the economic calendar, obviously. We know, uh, and you can see here, I just use the one that I have in the membership area for you guys all the time. This, I mean, this is what I use. I, I don't go anyplace else. Um, and you can see that non-farm payrolls are, are coming out tomorrow. We all know that, the jobs numbers. The forecast is 95,000. Previously, we only had 18. So pretty big jump. But if you look down here on the history, and this is what I really love about this tool, is that you can actually see the history of all the misses or, or beats of estimates. And you can see that actually just the last two are, are pretty, pretty slow you know, beats of, of numbers. And so if you look here, we actually had a couple months where it was actually beating. So don't be surprised if tomorrow, uh, if the jobs numbers come in okay, 
you know, anything okay, I think might spark another, you know, retracement rally. The markets have discounted a lot of information. And so anything that comes in that's frankly okay or, or not a huge, huge miss may actually be seen as good for the market. Uh, same thing with the unemployment rate, right? We've actually had better unemployment rates in the early of the year. We've actually kind of slipped a little bit at the end of the year here. Uh, but again, we're going to see uh, if we can't hold. If the unemployment rate holds firm, uh, then I think that we'll be okay. Again, that's going to be good for the markets. But of course, we'll see where things go. And of course, you guys can always use this tool. This tool is 100% available. It's the best tool out there for economic calendars and everything. For our current portfolios, Really what we have as far as credit spreads is uh, an RUT 910, 920 call, obviously doing amazingly well. Uh, for August, we have this troubling uh, S&P 1175, 1170 put spread, and we'll talk about that more. And then for September, we have this RUT 650, 640. Again, I think the September one actually is doing okay. It's, it's a little close, obviously, for how early we are, but we have a lot of time in September. Um, and so, you know, there's no need to really make drastic changes. That's still very far from the market. For the naked positions, and I'm going to go over all the charts actually as well too. Uh, for the naked positions, we have um, SPY 105, GLD 130, which is fine. OA, OIH 120, again, that's fine. IWM 69 put, that's a little bit close for August. We're going to watch that one. And then the DIA September 106.75. Again, a little close for my liking in September, but it's really, really early. So let's get in here right to the charts, um, and we'll go over all the ones except for the SPY just for now. So the IWM, we have a 69 put for August again. Still very good room, and you can see uh, clearly this is why I do this when I enter these trades, and I enter them far, far, far from the market, because even though the share price of these options or the, the price of these options has increased, most of that is due to just pure volatility. I mean, there's a good move down, right? But but today, volatility went from 25 to 30, right? The last time we, we saw that was in March when the market formed kind of a mini bottom here. So if you use that as your barometer, you know, we could be forming a very, very good bottom. But if you see here, the 69s, I think, are still well away uh, for August, not looking bad there at all. Uh, the 110s on the SPY, again, even with today's huge move down, nearly 5%, we're still well away from here. OIH, again, even with today's huge move down, we still have a lot of room. And then GLD, of course, is, is not even close to being uh, a problem. If you look at the DIA for our naked puts and calls uh, for September, it's a little close, like I said, for my liking. A little bit too close. Uh, obviously, I don't want us to be too close too early, right? And let the market continue to run lower. But we still have ample room here. I mean, this is again why we do this, why we take so much precaution early so that we don't run into it, our strikes aren't up here at 118 and we're already, you know, five points in the market. Because I know services out there that were selling calls or selling puts at 118 and 117 and 116, and now they're in the money. It's not that they're far, still far from the market with time to go. They're in the money, um, and they're just taking a bath on these things. For our iron condor, or not our iron condors, for our credit spreads, you can see we have one credit spread up here at 910. On the RUT, again, it's a little bit close for my liking uh, down here, just a little bit, if I can get it to zoom correctly. Um, our Positions actually at 650, but I have an alert at 660. So again, ample room here. The the market still has to really fall another 8% or so before we can get down to our level. So I feel good about this. I think that the market has, has absolutely fallen pretty hard here. So, you know, it's pretty natural that we might see a retracement. I'm sure that probably doesn't seem like it might happen after today's market, but um, but it's very likely to happen. Um, the SPX position that we have, this is the one that's actually a little bit close for my liking. Now, this is an August position, so it only has about 12 days left to go here, but it is a little bit close for my liking. We're obviously going to have to wait and see what jobs numbers come out tomorrow uh, and see where things go. But if they do come out and they're bad and the market starts to continue lower, uh, then this is one that we're going to start to roll very early. I'm probably roll it tomorrow uh, and just get away from the market. If you look at actually the trade grid, I brought up a trade grid at the SPX. You can see today that this spread actually closed at 150, right? So we sold it at 25. It's clearly made a big move lower because of the volatility and everything that's happened. 
but you can see that most of these options down here still have some really good premium left in them. This is uh, hard to say on the top side where it's, it's pretty dicey on the top side. The further you get out on the top side with call spreads, the harder it is. But the put spreads are being bought up very nicely. Uh, I'd probably end up, since we only have two credit spread positions for August, is probably end up going uh, pretty far down as far as I can possibly go, maybe 11.20, 11.15 and making the spread five points wider. Now, that, of course, that takes on a little bit more risk, right, because our margin is going to increase just a little bit to cover that difference. But I think that the benefit there is that we actually get to keep some premium for expiration, again, which is only 12 days away uh, or 13 days away after tomorrow. So uh, things are going to really speed up for time decay. I think that if we can get down to 11.20 or 11.15, Again, that's that's really a move all the way down here. It's another five, six, seven, eight percent move uh, down from where we are. So, not saying it can't happen, but I think that this is the only one that I'd consider rolling early here, uh, given the circumstances. It is pretty amazing uh, how far we've come. You look at the Dow, and uh, the Dow lost over 500 points today, and is basically doing everything that I kind of thought it would do. Uh, I've talked for months and months and months about the parallels that the Dow has had with the 2007 and 2008 top. Uh, and you can see that now we're in this phase here. We're in this phase of moving the first initial move lower before uh, a major, major, major correction. Uh, and I think that the government, everybody is trying to throw everything that it can possibly throw at this thing and uh, nothing's sticking. They're throwing all kinds of crap on the wall uh, but nothing's sticking. And you can see just the same parallel between the 2007-2008 top. And now we're starting this first initial leg lower. We'll probably see some consolidation for most of September, October. And then uh, if we don't even make it close to 1,200, uh, we'll continue selling off. Uh, there's really really no denying it at this point that, that things have obviously made a turn for the worse. So um, as always, I hope you guys enjoy these videos, uh, and I hope they're helpful. I'm always going to be here to answer and field questions, of course. Uh, you can post the questions on the blog, on the, to the trading alerts and the posts uh, to get answered. That way everyone can see the questions and answers because you you, everyone has the same, uh, same questions all the time and, and similar responses. So, But as always, I'll let you guys know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow morning if we're going to do anything. Uh, we'll just see how the jobs numbers come out.